Coming up on the program, we have bad soil. We're going to fix it and then replant what we had initially planted in this spot. And we'll take a look at an experiment that we did with our summer squash using coffee cans far earlier than most people would plant. Seems to have worked. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sioux Growing Supply. Dot com. Stop before you dig. Call Diggers Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Diggers Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com. Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors. Simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors. HappyLeafLED.com. Sustain Natural Fertilizer. Offering superior organic plant foods that deliver research proven results. Trusted by farmers, growers, and gardeners for 30 years. Learn more at Sustain.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. Today we've got a bed here that we had planted several months ago, about two months ago, with uh, parsnips as well as parsley, a uh, uh, rooted parsley. It's a ha Hamburg rooted parsley. It's got a parsley top and a rutabaga-like root on it. Well, we do have two of them that has come up. One here and one here of the parsley root. We didn't have any parsnips come up. I think we just had bad seeds. So I purchased more seed here. This is a hollow crown parsnip. And the soil, you can see with the cracks in here, we worked the soil early in the spring and amended it with compost. And it still is very clay in consistency. We've got leaks on this end that, uh, we, that are doing relatively well. So what we're going to do on this end is we're going to build the soil or fix the soil. And this is not an instantaneous result. It may take some time. And this will work if you have really clay soil as well. We've got a bag of certified leaf compost from some Sioux Growing Supply. And we're going to just pour it out, level it out, and plant in it. And then we're, with these two parsnip roots, we're going to be very gentle and not cover them up and allow them to grow. And with these weeds here, I could come in with a, a fork, a shovel, whatever, and remove them. I'm simply just going to cover them with the compost, and as they emerge to the compost, then I'll weed. And maybe I'll be able to smother out some of them, and I won't have to go through the, the, the procedure of weeding. So i got the compost here. And what we're doing here is covering the top of the bed with the compost. We're not working it in. And this will work well if you have really clay soil. And uh, what this does is, what happens with the clay soil, there's so, it's so dense and so uh, hard sometimes that it doesn't hold moisture or it holds too much moisture. Well, we're covering it and then that will kind of allow this compost to permeate into that clay soil and that will actually increase the microbial life, bring the worms in and help break it down that way as well. So I've got my two parsnip roots there I'm being very gentle with. I'm gonna put about an inch layer here the best I can is I can just plant directly into this as it was native soil. So where these two parsnip roots are I can just go ahead and make a furrow with my rake handle. And then my parsnips, I can do the same thing, uh, spacing them. I'm going to throw three rows in there, just like that. 
we'll do the now with the if you've never grown the parsnip the rooted parsnip they're very small seeds and they look like parsley seeds but the the top is edible and the root you can use that for dishes as you would um, parsley and we're just going to sprinkle these in and be sure we cover them and I'm not going to I'm going to overseed these tremendously and then come in and thin them uh, those will take about uh, 18 to 30 days to germinate so it's going to be a month before we really at, at longest before we see any results but by keeping this moist uh, that will make a difference as well as the parsnips will take 20 to 30 days obviously if conditions are ideal the acceleration of germination will be much quicker also good seeds make a big difference as well parsnip seeds are really most times just good for about one year we've had some that were several years old that we overseeded that worked very well but like we have to do here we have to go back and replant so it's better to make the investment of buying fresh seeds first and making one move than having to come back like we did here but also the soil we need to revitalize the soil work the soil and get that uh, the clayness consistency uh, to be better on this so if you've got clay soil like we have here or even somewhat clay soil you don't have to work the compost in you can simply set it on top and allow nature to take its course now if you have really dense soil really dense clay soil this may take two three or four years but over that time you will be able to see a tremendous difference in the health and well-being of your soil as that compost works into the native soil and the microbes and the worms work and and come back in that soil and uh, make it living soil again so growing in the ground, raised beds, or even containers like we have right here, you can produce a lot of produce. I've got a whole bunch of radishes here that have come out of the Rootmaker 60 gallon grow bags, the Red Champion radishes. These have sat in the ground for too long. They have split. They're still edible. They're going to have heat to them. Even icicle radishes, that is not a carrot. That is an actual white radish. They call it icicle because it looks like icicles hanging down. So still got a few more to pull here. And when you come in close here, you want to you want to look and see, uh, based on how loose your soil is, it may be uh, hard to see because these have grown in the ground. See, that's a beautiful uh, champion radish. I want to get these out. And you can, here's a, a big one here. That's about as big as they're going to get. You can, what you want to do is if you're going to long-term store these, you can pickle these, refrigerator pickle them. Or you can take and just trim the tops off, put them in an airtight container, keep them in the fridge. They'll last a couple of, uh, a week or two. Now, if you just put this on your counter, by uh, 24 hours, this thing will have shriveled up to nothing. You've wasted your time growing radish, so don't do that. Other things we've got planned here is we've got leeks. We've got seven leeks or six leeks there. I've got to replace one that didn't make it. We have just got some regular, uh, just rainbow Swiss chard. This is romaine lettuce started from seed. Beautiful romaine lettuce leaf lettuce started from seed and some potatoes in another grow bag so you don't have to have a lot of space you can see just in this little area here we got carrots there as well we got radishes leeks lettuce swiss chard potatoes and other plants that we'll put in here so little space no problem you can do this as a, on a patio porch deck or anywhere else So we're in our summer squash bed here and we planted this a month earlier than is recommended here in zone 5a we typically plant the squash memorial day weekend we planted this the middle of april and we did it using coffee cans now you can use metal coffee cans or plastic coffee cans what we chose to do was and i'll remove this one these are coffee cans we got from a local business it's neighbors to us and it's a cardboard aluminum foil type of coffee can with a, a metal ring so we removed the bottom and then placed it in the ground planted our seeds in it and left the lid on for a good four weeks as the plants began to push up on onto the uh, plastic lid we cracked the lid like you would vent it or slowly acclimated them to the outdoor temperature and by the time they were large enough 
it was already nice enough temperature. So this is one of those experiments that we will definitely remember next year and, and do it again. Now, you, again, you can use plastic coffee cans, metal coffee cans. You want to remove the bottom and push it in the ground and then leave that lid. The benefit to using the type of lids we had were they were uh, clear, almost clear. They were uh, translucent to allow the light in. If you're using a black lid, that's not going to work. If you're going to use any type of, you know, that type of thing, you want a translucent lid. Or you could actually wrap like a, a plastic um, saran wrap type of material over it. But if you can get these, know how many squash you're going to plant next year, kind of look around for these. Worked very well. Now, I've got six of them planted here. We have problems with the squash vine or moth. It lays its larva. What it does, it goes into the base of the plant, burrows in, lays its larva, and then it, the, that larva begins to eat the internal portions of the plant out, and that's what kills the plant. When your plant looks real wilty and you've watered it and you don't know what's wrong, that's the problem. We've had that a couple of years now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all but one of these coffee can uh, rings and experiment in that aspect and see if I leave this one alone, can and a weed around, will that moth penetrate into or go down in there and find the the stalk to burrow its larva and lay its larva, or will it look for the adjacent ones that are open and exposed? And if it does only affect the ones that doesn't have the ring on it, next year we will leave the ring on the entire grow season to try to eliminate that problem. So experiment in the garden to find out what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and even if the book says it doesn't, go ahead and try a little portion to see if you can confirm or deny that claim. Thanks for watching. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.